Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Today is the 24th of January. It's a Friday. TGIF, guys. Glad to have you guys here. Welcome to the show. Listen, let's get started, and let's talk about this new novel, Coronavirus. It's coming out of China, and it's so far there's been sporadic cases in different countries around the world other than China and uh, I've done some math on this thing you know going by the official numbers uh, that uh, are released from China but you know the official numbers might not be exactly correct because uh, it might there might be a much larger actual base of this thing like the amount of people that actually have it and don't know they have it because it in the initial phases, it manifests itself kind of like the common, ordinary head cold. It's like it's like the first, you know, and it has an incubation period, too, where you don't have any symptoms. Um, so anyway, this thing is growing fast, and, and so I've done the math, going back to when it started. It started probably with one or two or three people, just a very few people. And then it multiplies. It doubles the amount, and it doubles the amount again. And how quick is it doubling? Well, it looks like about every four days, it's doubling in size, you know. And the Chinese now are at a state where they are close. They're doing something unheard of in human. These cities, these cities like Wuhan, are not a small city. This is a city of 11 million people. Let, let that sink in for a minute, you know? That's a monster-sized metropolis. And, I mean, they're cordoning off millions of people and not, la not allowing them to move. Like, you're in the city, you're stuck in the city, you know, sort of thing. And so, meanwhile, all those people in the city, I guess the virus is going unchecked and growing within the population of these cities like Wuhan. Um but here's the thing, guys. With this sort of exponential growth, will we actually see it on the charts? Well, okay, let's uh, let's start the let's start the charts right here, and let's take a look at what's going on here with this. Whoops, uh, on this page. Okay, here's a map uh, from today. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to compare it to the map from yesterday. Now, take a look at this map closely, and you can see all these provinces. So, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. looks like about 30 provinces that are infected, you know? Now, if we go from the map from yesterday... We can see, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like eight provinces in China. One, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight provinces in China are affected. Now, if we go back to the map, that was yesterday's map. Today's map is many more provinces. Look, look out in the western part of China here, this big province up here in the western part of China. Yesterday, we can see that that province wasn't even affected yesterday. It, was, it didn't reach out that far. And so it's looking like it's spreading through China rather, rather rapidly. Now, because it's in these other provinces in China where they haven't cordoned these other provinces off yet, uh, the, they, they probably should have done this quarantine earlier. I think it's already escaped from the quarantined areas in China and spreading throughout the mainland uh, into these new provinces and getting a, a, a toehold. My uh, opinion on this, and this is my opinion only, is that this thing is very catchy. In other words, it's, it's kind of like catchy I think it's kind of catchy, kind of like a common head cold, but it's a head cold with a adverse effect on the tail end of it that causes pneumonia. Um, 
especially amongst the weak or the elderly, you know. And it seems like for the most part that the young people aren't dying from it near as much. It's, it seems like it's affecting more of the, the elderly, you know. Here's the thing. Will they be able to contain this virus in China, or or will it seed up in other countries and start to get loose in other countries through the general population? Well, we're going to find out the answer to this probably in the upcoming weeks, because this thing is moving fast at this point. We have to explore the possibilities of this thing becoming a global pandemic. Pandemic, or, or what, what they call it, pandemic, a global pandemic. We have to explore those possibilities now at this point in time. What effect would that have? What spillover effect would that have if it becomes a global pandemic? Well, first off, I deal mostly on my shows with the global financial system. My main channel is Financial Turmoil Explained. And the financial system has been moving toward a financial system crisis for a long time now. The world's central banks have been holding it back. But how this crisis would probably start is with a deflationary event, an extremely deflationary event. Well, you know, I can't think of anything more deflationary than a worldwide pandemic. And the reason why is, is because when a pandemic like this is going around, people get frightened. First off, they decide not to do things that they'd normally do. Like, say, they might decide that they're not going to go out to that uh, that social event or whatever. Or they're not going to go to that restaurant tonight, you know? Or even when it comes down to buying things, okay? Pretend you're, you go to Amazon. Normally, you know, I mean, you might buy this item and, and you... you you got it all set. You've looked at the item and you think, hey, great, I'm going to buy this, you know, and you start scrolling down the list. But now because of this new pandemic, all of a sudden when you get down to the place where you're ready to hit the button that says pay now, you know, put it on your, put it in your cart, you know, the, the button that you push to put it in your cart and you see made from China, shipped from China. And all of a sudden you're like, your eyes are going back and forth, you know, and you're thinking to yourself, uh, and you hold off putting that, pushing that button, you know, that says that it's going to be delivered from China. And you start to think to yourself, you know, and, and you might, you might not even buy it. Well, that could picture this being happening over multiple cases across America. People tomorrow morning not buying an item because it's made from China. Because the virus is in China, and they think to themselves, well, you know, they might ship it from China, and somebody uh, there might cough and sneeze all over the box or whatever, you know, and then they ship it right to me, and I open the box, and my hands are all over something that has been virally content. This is what goes through people's mind. People do not think rationally in a situation like this. And in a way, it's it's not rational thought that determines people's actions sometimes, especially in a situation like a virus like this, whereas uh, fear and panic starts to take over the general population, and this spills over into people uh, not making purchases, people staying home, uh, people eating what they have in the cupboard because they don't want to go to the grocery store because they're scared somebody might cough on them and so on. These thoughts go through rational people's minds. These are rational thoughts, you know, but they can carry it to the next level when fear starts to take hold. And suddenly, and even in countries that maybe don't have the virus, you might see less people at the market. You might see less people at the shopping store. You might see less people at the mall. You might see less people when you go out in public because people are staying home because they're frightened that they might come in contact with the virus, even if it's not in their country yet. Fear is not rational. Fear doesn't follow rational lines all the time. And so this could have a, an absolutely astounding effect upon the, the consumer in economies all around the world. 
And we know that the consumer is the only thing holding the economies up at this point in time. So we could have a double whammy. Have a virus to deal with that's pri pro pl primarily a, a a, a virus that would affect the people with weakened immune systems and also older and elderly people, but it could affect these people in a profound way. Uh, I mean, this is a very serious virus. And then on the other side of this coin, we've got the financial system, which could affect people in a big, serious way, too. So we got both of these things converging like a train converging on the tracks right two trains converging on the tracks ready for a giant boom you know what i mean so listen we're going to watch this virus very carefully it is spreading it's spreading fast uh in my opinion i think that that china is going to be over the next few weeks going to be affected the most from this because they have the most cases spreading out amongst different provinces in China. You can see the rapid spread of this thing. It's spread through half of China now. It's all the way up to Beijing. And Beijing, you know, is a huge city. I mean, and look, it's Beijing now. The Beijing area has turned red with meaning it has 21 cases or more of people that are manifesting this illness. Now you have to understand something else too. I'm going to say before I go on today's report on this virus, you got to understand one other thing too, is most of these people who are who they're reporting on these 800 cases are people who have got sick enough where they've reported into the hospital with like maybe their chest full of mucus or whatever and they're really they can't hardly breathe or whatever then they go to the hospital a lot of people might have this thing who who where it's just manifesting itself like a flu and they're staying home and they probably don't really want it they're just like every country on earth nobody wants to go to the hospital but at a certain point if you get so sick you're forced to go to the hospital and at that case, then they diagnose them and say, hey, you got this virus, you know, but it would be the most sick of the, of the bunch that would, would go into the hospital and be diagnosed with the virus. So how many, other, how many of them are there out there who are not manifesting the symptoms to the point of being, well, let's just take a look down here real quick and what it says here on this article. It says, yes. It is less dangerous than SARS. In other words, it doesn't kill as high a percentage rate as SARS does. But if those hard to detect mild or maybe symptomless cases are contagious too, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the, the, the symptomless and mild cases of this disease are contagious too? then it's going to be much harder to contain this virus, it says, than SARS, much harder to contain. Well, you know what? They barely contain SARS, guys. It was a touch-and-go situation there for a while with SARS. I remember it was frightening. It was very frightening. It was very touch-and-go whether they'd be able to contain it. It was here in Canada. And I remember what it did to the economy here in Canada. I think there was like 300 cases here in Canada or maybe a little bit more than that. And the economy just basically fell off a bridge because nobody wanted to go anywhere. Everything was empty. Libraries were empty. Uh, malls were empty. Restaurants were empty. This is what a virus like this can do to the economy. And talk about a slowdown. Talk about consumer spending. The economy can destroy us. And why I'm talking about the economy right now instead of the virus is the economy has the potential to destroy us as much as a virus. The economy, if the economy completely collapses, the spill off effects of that, the potential spill off effects of that can be absolutely enormous. So listen, thank you guys for listening. It's because everything runs on money.
Thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the very next show. Bye-bye.